my channel. My name is Jess and I love doing DIY, making clothes in a seemly but pretty way. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I make this boiler suit. I got the inspiration to make this jumpsuit while playing June Journeys. And if you don't know, June Journeys is a very relaxing but interesting game where you will play in a super beautiful vintage things. And I love vintage style, I always try to add vintage style in my DIY projects. And this game gave me a lot of vintage inspiration. So maybe we will have some vintage inspired DIY coming up. Even this game is quite relaxing when playing. One thing keep the game really interesting is that one of the hidden objects we find at Ising will be a clue to take a deeper to the story of the game where June uncover the truth about her sister murders and her family secrets. It's make all the things connected and keep us playing. That is one of the reasons I like this game because I don't like the game, it's just the game. And besides that, this game is free to download so you can use the link in my description to download or you can download it straight from the app store on your phone. But it would be great if you can use the link in my description because I can keep tracking and know it's from you. And back to our DIY today. Before we start, I just want to say that if you want to track it out, please be patient with this because it's a pretty long project but the result will be totally worth it. So let's get started. The first step is making the main pattern for the jumpsuit. To make the front pin pattern, I draw a rectangle with 24cm width which is a quarter of my hip side plus 1cm and 94cm length which is a length from 2cm above my belly button to over my ankle. It's the length of the pin that you want. From the top of the pins, I mark down on two length lines 32 cm which is a quarter of my hip side plus 1 per 10 my hip side. It's the length of the cross band that I want because I want it to be high weighted bands. From this new line, I draw another one 7 cm next to it and close to the top with line. It's the position of the picket part of your butt. From one end of the first straight line, I draw out 4.6 cm which is 1 by 20 my hip side. Then connect the end of this line to one end of the second straight line. Based on it, I draw a curved line to finish the cross line of the front pattern. From the first straight line, I draw another one 8 cm next to it and further to the second one. It's the position of the biggest part of your tie. From the top width line, I mark down at 55 cm on two land lines. It's the length from 2 cm above the belly button to my knee. On the first straight line, which is the cross line, I mark at the middle foot. Then I draw a horizontal line going through this mark to the rest of the rectangle. From the middle of the other width line of the rectangle, which is the end of the lead, I mark to outside 9cm. So the width between two marks will be a half the width of the end of the leg that I want. From the middle of the knee line, I mark out 10 cm which is 1 cm bigger than the end of the leg. From the middle of the tie line, I mark out 12 cm which is a quarter of my tie plus 1 cm. Then I connect the end of these lines together at the same side to finish the inside seam and the side line of the last pen. Moving to the waistline, from the middle, I mark up 7cm and mark down 11cm. 
so the width between two marks will be 18 cm, which is a quarter of my waist size plus 2 cm. Because I want the waistband of the jumpsuit a bit bigger than my waist size to create a bit of a loose feeling for the jumpsuit. But you can make it the same with your waist size if you want. Then connecting two ends of the waistline to the crotch line and to the side line. From the top of the crotch line, I mark down 1 cm. Then connect it to the other end of the waistline to finish the new waistline for the front pattern. I add 1 cm seam allowance for the pattern, except 4 cm seam allowance at the end of the leg. And here is the front pattern of the pants after cutting. To make the back pattern of the pants, I start from the front pattern. But I increase the width of the end of the leg line and the knee line 3 cm, which is 1.5 cm each side. For the cross line, I move out 9.2 cm, which is 1 per 10 my hip side, instead of 4.6 cm like the front pattern. After that, I make the curve for the cross line similar to the way I did for the front pattern. And you will have one piece of the pocket pattern after cutting. As I want the pocket to have a side look at the front, I draw a triangle at the edge of the front pattern with 4cm high and 14cm length, which is the width of the open area of the pocket where you can put your hand in. Add in 1cm for seam allowance after that, then cutting. Because of that, I apply the pocket pattern to the front pattern and draw along. And you will have the second piece of the pocket pattern after cutting. Connect two pieces together and you will have the pocket pattern of the pants. To make the top pattern of the jumpsuit, which is the jacket part, I start with the back of the jacket foot. I cut a big rectangle and fold it in half. From the folding line, I draw a rectangle with 21cm width, which is a quarter of my bust side, blood 1cm, and 38cm length, which is the length from the shoulder to 4cm above my belly button. From the top of the folding line, I mark out 8cm on the width line. It's the half width of the neck of the jacket that I want. From the top of the folding line, 
I marked down three centimeters, which is the deep of the neck at the back of the jacket. Then drawing a curved line that connects two marks together to help the neckline for the back of the jacket. From the marks on the width line, I keep marking out nine centimeters. So the width between this mark to the top of the folding line will be 17 centimeters, which is a half of the width between two shoulders. After that, I draw a straight line down from this mark, then making a curved line to connect it to the land line at 22 centimeters. It's the width from the shoulder to over the ambic. And you will have the slit line after that. At the top of this line, I mark down 2 cm. Then connect this mark to the end of the neckline to finish the new shoulder line. Because of that, I redraw the slit line for the back pattern of the jacket. At the end of the pattern, from the folding line, I mark out 18 cm on the width line. It's the quarter of the waist side plus 2 cm. After that, I connect this mark to the end of the sleeve line to finish the side line of the back pattern of the jacket. I add 1 cm for seam allowance, then cutting. And we will have the back pattern of the jacket after that. To make the front pattern, I copy a half of the back pattern first. Then I lower down the shoulder line 2 cm. From the top of the neckline, I mark down 5 cm. It's the dip of the neck at the front jacket. Then drawing a curved line to finish the neckline for the front pattern. I also redraw the sleeve line after that. Because the front jacket will be created in two pieces. So I add 1 cm extra for seam allowance at the middle of the front pattern. And we will have the front pattern of the jacket after cutting. To make the sleeve pattern, I draw a rectangle with 42 cm width, which is the total length of the sleeve line at the front and the back pattern, and 55 cm length, which is the length from the shoulder to my ribs, plus 2 cm for seam allowance. I draw a horizontal line in the middle of the rectangle to divide it into two equal parts first. Then from one width line, which is the top of the sleeve, I draw a straight line at 15 cm under it. Based on this line, I draw a curved line going through the middle of the top width line to create a sleeve line for the sleeve pattern. Make sure this sleeve line have the same length with the total length of the sleeve line at the front and the back pattern of the jacket, so you can connect them together later. From the middle at the end of the sleeve, I mark out 14 cm, so the width between two marks will be 28 cm, which is the width of my ribs plus 10 cm. Is the width for the end of the sleeve that you want. Then connect these marks to two ends of the sleeve line to finish the sleeve pattern. Now, let's start making this jumpsuit. I use 2 meters of thick khaki seal fabric for this DIY. Apply on the pattern to the fabric and draw along. I start making the pins first. After cutting, I connect two pieces of the front pants and two pieces of the back pants together at the cross line. However, keep around 20 cm unsold for the cross line at the front pants. I fold the pocket in half and sew the end of it first.
After that, I use an iron to create the folds for the pockets. To create a cap for the pocket, I cut two small rectangles with 8cm length and 15cm width, which is the same width as the pocket. I make a small cut with 2cm at two ends of the rectangle first, then sewing to connect two pieces of the cap together. After sewing, I turn on the seam inside and make another seam outside it. And here is the pocket set of the jacket. You will need one more set like this. To mark the position for the pocket, I draw a line at 8cm above the end of the front jacket and another line at 3cm inside the middle of the front jacket. After adding the pocket to the position, I make two ends at the end of the pocket similar to the cap by folding them inside, then sewing. At the top of the pocket, I draw a line 1cm above it. It will be the position for the cap later. After the first seam, I fold the cap down to cover the pockets, then make the second seam. And here's the front jacket with the pocket. Now I'm connecting the front and the back of the jacket together at the shoulder and two sides. Moving to the sleeve of the jacket. I connect two under ambic lines together first. At the end of the sleeve, I mark at the middle, then make two more marks at two centimeter two side of it. After that. I fold these marks together to create a folding fabric at the end of the sleeve and sewing to keep them stay there. So the total width at the end of the sleeve will be 24cm which is the width that I want. I cut a rectangle with 8cm length and 24cm width which is the same width at the end of the sleeve. I connect one width line of this rectangle to the end of the sleeve first. After that, I fold the rectangle in half and sew at two land lines. Then I upside this part after sewing to hide the seam inside. I fold the other width line of the rectangle inside around 1cm first, then keep folding it over the seam of the first width line and sewing. And here's the end of the sleeve after on. Now I'm connecting the sleeve to the jacket.
to create the waistband for the jumpsuit, I cut a rectangle with 6 cm length, which is the length of the waistband I want, plus 2 cm, and 72 cm width, which is the same with the width of the waistline at the pants and the width at the end of the jacket, so I can connect the waistband to the pants and to the jacket later. To create the bell loop for the waistband, I cut a rectangle with 4 cm width and 42 cm length. I fold two length lines inside 1 cm first, then keep folding again and sew to keep them together. After that, I cut it into 6 pieces with 7 cm length each one. Then I add the bell loop to the waistband and sewing. Here is how it looks after all. To create the button area for the jumpsuit, I cut a long rectangle with 6 cm width and 54 cm length, which is 2 cm longer than the length from the jacket to the cross line. I connect one length line of the rectangle to the jumpsuit first. After sewing, I fold the other land line inside around 1 cm, then keep folding it over the first seam and make the second seam. Make sure the width of the button area will be around 3 cm and the first seam should be at the middle of it. Doing the same for the other side and here is the button area of the jumpsuit. We will add the button and make the button holes there later. Moving to the neck of the jumpsuit, I measure the final length of the neckline first. Then I cut two rectangles with 6 cm width and 47 cm length, which is 2 cm longer than the length of the neck. I draw a straight line in the middle of the rectangle first. Then from the top of this straight line, I mark down 2 cm. Based on this mark, I draw a curved line to connect to two ends of the lane line. From two ends of the other lane line, I mark inside 2 cm, then connect it to the end of the other lane line at the same side. After cutting, I sew two pieces together first. Then I upside it to hide on the seam inside and make the other seam outside. And here is the first part of the collar of the jumpsuit. I cut another two rectangles with 5 cm width and 47 cm length, which is 2 cm longer than the length of the neck. At two edges of the rectangle, I draw a curved line there, then cutting. After that, I connect two pieces to the first part of the neck I just finished before that. Make sure the first part of the neck will be in the middle between two pieces, then sewing. Now I'm connecting one piece of the curler to the neck of the jumpsuit first.
After that, I fold the other piece inside around one centimeter first, then keep folding it over the first seam and make the second seam to finish the color of the jumpsuit. The last step is installing the button and making the button holes. And I finished this DIY. Here's my final result. This boiler suit is just so pretty but elegant. I can feel the vintage so much in it. Hope you will like it and try it out. See you next week.